In this video, we'll add a new panel to the Rike Fusion Live configuration we've done. The new panel is actually not a panel with buttons. It is an Ethernet GPI link box, one that we produce, and it is raw panel compatible. And with that one, we have eight inputs and eight outputs, and we want to link them up with a certain properties like ATEM tally and also our camera selector. So the idea is to say, okay, whenever we have a camera selected and it is on program, we want the relay in that box to flip. So we will add a panel, we'll see how we can integrate it into the configuration and drive the output pins on that panel from the, um, the information that we have in the tree. So that's what we will be doing. And if you haven't watched the other videos, then we have been building up this configuration for Rack Fusion Live ground up. There's no... Um, pre-installed configurations here. We, are, we have basically coded everything ourselves. And now we want to take some of that information and add a panel. And I gotta say, I'm freestyling a little bit here, so I may have to pause the video a few times. But the first thing we wanna do is to add a panel and then uh, we'll simply search on the network to see if we can find an Ethernet GPIO uh, box. It's called E21 GPIO, Ethernet GPI link. So this is like the, the model name and that has a long historical reason for, for being chosen. I also, so as I'm selecting this actually, um, it's it looks like we have a panel on the network. I don't have it next to me. I have the Rec Fusion Live. In fact, everything you see right now on your screen is coming out of this unit. So it has the web server and everything built inside of it. Just one cable PoE powered, that is the master of everything. So now this Rack Fusion Live becomes the master of the Ethernet GPI link box that we have just added here. Now I want this one to have removed its configuration because I, I want to pair it up with the Rack Fusion Live up here. And that's going to be the little experiment that we are running here. Um, but let's just see how that goes. The uh, control itself, important, important, is emulated. So on my local host on this URL, we have actually the device. We, we can see it here. We can, uh, on the inputs, we can press these and then we'll send a trigger over. So uh, see, I think it would be useful to just separate this tab out quickly so that I have the ability to see it here on the side. What you're seeing right here is, is the um, Skyhoy Raw Panels, uh, Skyhoy Raw Panel Dummies application which can emulate any Skahoy panel. And now I just made it emulate this guy. Okay, let's go over to the configuration. And actually we also do have the Ethernet GPI link right here. I was just a little bit unsure how informative it would be and how much we would get out of it in the internal environment in Reactor. This is why I like to, to keep this one out here on the side. Okay, so um, the, the first thing we um, need to look for is that now that I chose not to have a configuration for this one, we see that we have basically only the configuration for the um, Rack Fusion Live. But that won't stop us because if we go to the key map of the Rack Fusion Live, we'll see that all the aliases we are defining here are getting mapped onto uh, panel number one, which is the Rack Fusion Live here. I, I'm not sure that this one knows what panel it is. So in fact, um, and this is the freestyle part of it, Okay, let's just go to the root layer. And if I click this guy, it says 2.9, that's clever. Yeah, 2.9, perfect, perfect. Because actually on here, on the homepage, we had panel number ID1 and ID2. By the way, this is something you see when Sure Advanced is enabled. And if you have, so enable that if you need to um, detect the panel ID. So having multiple panels in the system means that they are associated with IDs. And uh, I just wanted to check here. So if I am trying to add behaviors to the inputs and the outputs here, it's correctly detected. That's very nice to see. So um, so that is basically getting information from the ATEM would be super easy, but we also need to get information from the camera select variable. Because um, if you followed the previous videos, you know that as we are selecting between these, if we go to emulation mode here, you can see we are currently having the, the Canon camera selected. And then if I go to the Panasonic camera, you see uh, one of these variables are changing, cam select. This one seems to be, you know, basically pointing out camera number three. It could say cam three, it says page three, page two, page one. So this variable is the one that we want to be included in the evaluation of tally on the Ethernet GPI link. And therefore, to be able to use that variable, we either need to create the, dr the, the driving of the Ethernet GPI link inside of the PVC layer here. Otherwise, we do not have access to this variable or we need to move the variable to a layer lower down. 
I have this idea that maybe we want to have a configuration that basically supports two panels. It supports a Fusion Live and alternatively also a Ethernet GPI link. And therefore, I would move the variable down on this layer and then I would also include inside, I would have to go into the JSON and then I would tell this layer that there can be a second panel, which is an Ethernet GPIO box. Okay, so let's, but I think we can just do that a little bit later. So um, maybe let's just start by moving the variable. And here there's a known bug in this version of Reactor, which I hope will be fixed the moment you get it. I cut the variable and I paste it in here. And last time I did that, something terrible happened. Yeah, it did something to my layers up here, which is super weird. I'll just undo this. It Yeah, it removed the layer. So that is a strange thing. I got to say, the safest way we can do this is to go into the JSON and move it down on that one. So let's just do that. And we'll call this an advanced session. All right. So you see variables here on the root layer. That's super nice. So let's just, you know, collapse the, these a little bit. We won't need all this information. But then we come to the layers here. And this is where we need to watch out. I think it's the PTC layer. And there we have variables cam menu cam select cam select is the one yeah page one two three okay so we'll just copy this code including the comma here just i'll uh, basically copy we'll cut it and then i'll just go up here open these variables again and then let me see uh before shift it could be before okay i'll just paste it in here now what it's always important with json that you notice these commas you know if you have objects on the same level there has to be commas between them but not on the last one Otherwise, you will also get a little warning up here. But what I did now was when you go back to the tree, uh, sorry, on the configuration tab in the tree, you'll see that the variable cam select has now moved down on the Rec Fusion page. Perfect. All right. I think I will make a layer anyway for the um, GPI. Let's just call that GPI. And on this layer, this is where I intend to put my, my inputs and outputs on, on this one. So let's see, we, we need to drive an output, right? So we need to drive an output. Let's just um, pick one of these and get started, associate it with the ATEM. And uh, let me see. Yeah, um, so, so we'll select the ATEM tally by source flags. We need to pick the video source. That will be input number one. And then also say this is program, all right? So that would be tally on the first one here. And um, then it has a toggle. Actually, it doesn't matter because there's no, uh, in, in this case, all the toggle needs to do is to uh, light up. Um, yeah, actually, I'll just select empty. In fact, I will, yes. So we pick the IO reference up here. And then if I go into show more and we go into our, let me see, conditional feedback, that's what we would need. Um, this one is not useful. Okay. I'll just remove this guy and then I'll create our own conditional feedback. Basically, oh, we, we can also start a little different place. Okay, let's go into default feedback and set this to on. Okay. And somehow I am a little bit confused why it would do it for all of these. Okay, let's just check. Um, Okay, interesting. Uh, for a short while, I was a little bit confused because as I added something to the buttons on the configuration tab, despite having removed the configuration, like no configuration, there's some logic, probably we would call it intelligence, that adds this configuration as I'm trying to do something. I don't think that is exactly what I want at the moment because basically what it gave me in the configuration tree was this whole configuration that I wouldn't you know, prefer to have. So we'll just go back here and we'll go to a basically a create if we create custom configuration, maybe that will hold a little bit of a clue to what we want to do. And then if we go into the configuration tab, you can see this one include test and looking inside of this one, notice that it has this panel mapping and it says that it's mapping this panel to ID number one. So in fact, what I want to do here is to um, just go one step backwards and in the oh wait, I can also just go to this tab. Yes, please. Okay, so actually, I, I want to not have this configuration at all, I'll just remove configuration. And then I will go into the config tab. And then in my right fusion live, I'm now going to edit the JSON because there's panel mapping for the right fusion live as well. And this is basically where I would just, you know, type in that panel ID two should be one of the models. And that would be the one that I had from the other one. So that gave me a clue. 
I want to save this. But before I do, I also quickly want to check another thing, which is our HVC key map. And okay, that looks pretty nice and fine. So the HVC key map is mapping all the aliases down onto actual key um, hardware component numbers. And the key map, which is on this layer, is the important one because there you see it, it sounds weird to map panel number one to panel number one, but this is something that is very necessary if you on the home screen has multiple panels that are using the same config, then it might be panel number one mapped to panel number 10. So we'll just add a panel map more and then just do this panel number two to panel number two. It seems to be a good idea um, just for the um, uh, basics of it. But anyway, I hope if I go back to the home screen that we might see something interesting, right? That now these two are grouped together and it's it's known to the home screen that they are running on the same configuration, even though it's two different panel. Guess how we are doing modularity. When you have a mega panel, you have multiple uh, ME modules and they are added to the transition block by combining them all into a single configuration referring to panel one, two, and three. And then they are also shown like that on the home screen. So it's actually a pretty clever idea. And now if I go into Rack Fusion configuration and we find our Ethernet GPI link, then we should be able to go to one of these and create a new behavior on the GPI layer right there. We got it. And um, then I, I want to, okay, so the first thing that we probably want to do, because if you want to follow what I did before, we'll just create an empty behavior, show more, we'll go into this one and then see what is it actually that turns on and off this kind of thing. So if I if I choose on here, and now I could also check out, you know, this is how it looks in my in my um, in my emulator on the side. So it is lighting up red like that when it is when the relay is shorted. And then I go back here. What about dimmed? And we'll check. Okay, dimmed is the same as off. So it's either and then off would be off. So off and dimmed means the same when we are dealing with a binary output component like a relay. So it's on or dimmed, on and dimmed. Okay, so that's kind of fine. It is actually compatible with most actions that you normally find for any any parameter that you could choose. So let's now go and find something like, um, we were looking for tally source by tally flex and then associated with inputs program submit. And it may now suggest the behavior. Okay, and it chooses toggle. And I think toggle is gonna be fine because it sees that this is a binary behavior. So it will actually, if we go out here and now I need my ATEM software control. Where are you when I need you? Thank you. Okay, so we can go in here. We chose input number one. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens if we choose input number one. Yeah, perfect. By the way, did you know, if you uh, follow along, then um, it, you know, tally is more than just the question of whether it's on program or preview. It's if the source is live. And this is why it's important to use the tally source by teleflex or whatever that parameter was called because this um, now notice the key I have the key configuration open here if I changed over so that upstream key was depending on camera number one, which is input number one over here, then notice what happens when my key goes on, I also get red tally on camera number one because now camera number one is live although it is not the main source selected on the switch. So that's just a little bit of a note and why you need to use the tally, um, which calculates the true tally of, of anything. Okay, <clears throat> if we want to see how the toggle actually works, then uh, we can see in default feedback, it will give us off intensity by default, but the conditional feedback says that if the IO reference equals the default value of the IO reference or is different from it, then set intensity to on. So this is basically how, you know, saying that if the tally is not false, if it's true, then it, um, it, it should light up. And we need to add to this condition an additional condition, which is if our camera is uh, page, uh, if the camera selector is page number one. Okay, so let's just uh, check this out. Uh, no, actually let's add tally for a few no, wait, hmm. Actually, this could be quite a big uh, conditional feedback. I mean, th that could be different strategies. If you just want to map a whole lot of tellies to these, then you would replicate this behavior multiple times and so on. But the interesting bit on what we're doing today is to see how can we uh, modify this conditional feedback a little bit. So let's just edit it here. So it now says this, and then I would like to add something to it. 
I think this guy. So now we have an and statement, and that statement could be if the camera variable cam select here is equal to page one. Okay. So now we have two conditions that needs to be met for this one to light up. Let's just submit this guy. All right. So um, uh, let's let's try this out. Uh, we have the emulated environment here that helps me to select cameras. So we have now the first camera selected, page number one here. And then we can have the ATEM software control and we could also have our, if we go here, we have this one. Okay, ATEM software control. Yes, please. Thank you. Now we go back to camera number one and we see this one is lighting up, but also because camera number one was selected, because if we select camera number two, notice that it's now off even though that it's one over here. Now camera number two is input number two. So what we could do is to build this one out because right now it will only light up in case th this, this was true. Okay, so I'm thinking there is a way that we can create like multiple levels. And if not, then I, okay, so now I'm just adding, what about this one? Ah, okay, there we get an and inside, hmm. Now it's starting to get a little bit of confusing to me. Let's um, let's try this one out like that. Okay, so it's like, and this one needs to be all. Okay, so we'll we'll build this up. IO reference is not equal to the default. Fine, and then the variable cam select is equal to the literal value page one. All right, got that. Now down here we would actually sort of need to do what we did up there. Behavior, IO reference, submit is not equal to. And then we would say IO reference, whoops, right there. Modifier, default, which gives us the default value of the parameter. Okay, so that looks like this. It has to be the same. It has to be the same. No, wait, do it, does it? We're getting into trouble here. Um, I'm getting into trouble, yeah, uh, because it's it's actually what, what I'm trying to do. It's not useful to have that. I need to work with multiple IO references. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is to take this parameter out, actually, and just save it without it. And then I'm going to build conditional feedback up uh, without it. Now, I'm I'm really afraid that I'll have to do a lot of um, okay um, change of strategy I have just removed the IO reference from up here because the, what I'm starting to do here is going to be a huge conditional statement to light up that button okay and uh, we are simply going to leave the idea of this generic IO reference we are just having even I, I don't even know that I why I would need the let, let me get out of here, please. Okay, so we have uh, empty, it, it was just an empty behavior for this output on my Ethernet GPI link box, this one output up here. Alright, so I'll go down in the active if and then um, what you can see is that I've managed to create two end statements which are all together. So um, up here, we'll just go into the device call atom mini search for tally because we are now just going to address it straight up. So this is not very scalable. This is just going straight for input number one program. If that is equal to, and then I will take a literal, literal value true. If the tally is true for input number one, and if cam select is equal to page one, then this will return true. Or if, and this is where I would really like if I could just copy paste this value, but I can't. The system kind of wants me to select it in the good old fashioned way. So let's just do that. Tally source by flags. Then we can say input number two is, you know, program input number two is equal to. And now I will choose a literal value. True. True is lowercase. That's how to identify that. Cam select. We'll just pick the variable real quick here. If that is, ooh, why not? Okay, so if cam select is equal to, and page two, there we go. Okay, submit. And then we could continue like that, adding more of these, but now submitting this should give us an intensity on conditional feedback, which is 
on. Okay, and default feedback is actually off. And that's totally fine, but this will be on when these conditions are met. Let's check it. And having, now we have camera number two selected. So if I go to camera number two over here, we should see red here, and we did. And if I select camera number three, let me make this a little bit different. Okay, so now we have camera number three chosen. Regardless which one of these, I won't have tally because it's not dangerous. The camera operator here is on camera number three. He can freely move it. Let's go to camera number one. And down here, uh, the camera oper currently camera number two is on program, so or has red tally. But if I go to this one, the camera operator would be warned if we had a big red lamp flashing in his face based on the relay output of the Ethernet GPI link box. So it actually does work, but it's also only two um, two things we have set up like this. And maybe you have felt a little bit of a frustration with me um, or uh, from me regarding the editing of this uh, condition. And uh, therefore, <clears throat> I want to show you that this would always be the moment where either I would try to find a different strategy altogether, or if I want to continue like this, which is totally possible, then I would go into the JSON editor. Because in the JSON editor of this one, I get access to the active if in a way that I can better manage, I feel. Because there's a pattern here. I know that uh, this means a program, this means the input source. If that is true, and if cam select is page one, or that that double vertical pipe means all. If this device call reference input number two is true, and if cam select is is page two, so you can see this would just continue like that. So all I need to do is to basically copy this section and just paste in, change this to three, change this to three, and then I would go, I would go to the end and just paste it in once again. I, I just pasted it in four. And four. Okay, so let's just slowly go back. See, so that was input number four. Oh, yeah, okay, we don't have camera number four. So we can't even do this. Okay, it doesn't matter. So I'll just do it for the three cameras that I. Ooh! Wait, 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 wait. By the way, this is a really powerful editor. And I would so much love to, you know, claim the. Um, uh, the credits for it, but it's uh, from something called VS Code, which is a code editor that many of you guys probably know already. And um, they have some way we can embed this. I have very clever people figuring that out. But it means that you have some really, really cool features in it. Uh, it is possible to do like um, if you mark this one, then you, you can easily, uh, you know, find other places and search and so on. So there's a lot of cool things going on. But now the main point is that I was able to extend my conditional feedback to also include camera number three. So let's just go check this having the um, the ATEM software control come up here. Okay, so we have camera number one selected. That means we get red warning when we are there. We select camera number two. Let's just see. And back to ATEM software control. We have warning when camera red, you know, camera number two is on, on program. And then finally we choose camera number three. And when we are cam on camera three and this one, we get red warning on that one. Guys, this is all I, I can cover for you uh, here. Basically, we have seen, first of all, how to make like uh, nested conditions with and and or. And um, you can do, do that as much as you want. And that is now driving a single GPI output on an Ethernet GPI link that we added to the configuration. We also put it in so that they are kind of bound together. And this RecFusion Live configuration we have made expects to have an additional module, the Ethernet GPI link connected to it as panel number two. So that's what we covered in this video. I find this is really exciting and hope it's useful for you as well and have expanded all your insights into what you can do in the reactor universe.